what do these PhD programs uh, look for? Uh, really, they look for your GRE score, particularly your GRE score in your quant and in your analytics. They don't put a lot of weight on your English score. They put a huge amount of weight on your quantitative score. And so if you're in the 90th percentile or above, you're very competitive when it comes to uh, these economics courses or economics programs, I'm sorry. If you're not in that 90th percentile, it is gonna be a, a harder push for you. You're gonna need to be able to show that you did really well in those math classes I just talked about uh, when you go to uh, apply to those programs. What else do you need? Well, if you have any interest whatsoever in the following the PhD, you need to talk to one of your professors as early as possible. <laughs> because uh, they're going to help you try to map out those math courses for you along with your econ major. You, what you don't want to do is find yourself in a situation where you're now a, a junior or even more so senior, and you're like, oh, now I want to do a PhD, and you haven't taken all those other math courses. You haven't had the time to write a paper or, or do something uh, associated with research. Um, and so I would suggest you talk to your professor as early as possible. Try to become an RA for free if you can. Usually it is a bit of a two-way road in the sense that um, they're gonna teach you how to do research and, and you're gonna be helping them with some active research questions that, that they're writing. Uh, write a senior thesis if that's an option that's available for you. Uh, write a paper in econometrics. This has a dual benefit to you. Not only does it help you for your PhD program, but when you go off for job interviews, this is a story you can tell. You can actually tell the employer, the, the potential employer here, oh, I wrote this paper and these were the findings and this is the data I used and this is the analysis I did. And that's what employers want to hear. They wanna hear how you think when you go through these processes. So it's, it's something that's gonna have a dual purpose for you. I, I will say you don't actually have to be an econ major to get a PhD in economics. I know that sounds weird, <laughs> but, but there are lots of people who go into the PhD who don't come from an econ background. I will say though that after you make it past your prelims, which is usually the big weed out section, uh, folks who were econ majors have a higher survival rate in the program after that. And so there, there is this uh, trade-off between the two. The other thing that might surprise you is that who has a PhD in the US uh, has changed over time by quite a bit, all right? Um, when you go into your graduate school, particularly if, uh, if you're an American, you're gonna be the minority in the, in the room. Right? When, in my graduate school, we were 40 uh, students in, in that class, and we were only 10 Americans in the class. And of the 10 Americans, uh, three of us finished. <laughs> so, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel quite different in that classroom. Uh, so be ex just expect that. Uh, if, you, if you need proof positive of that, look over your uh, professors in your college. You're probably already seeing some of that uh, diversity that exists within those graduate programs. All right, so some tips. We're here near the end. Um, talk to your professor as early as you can. There is a path to success, and you need to know it. <laughs> All right. Uh, two, be realistic. Uh, I want you to apply for these top 50 programs, uh, or if, if you can look at programs that have uh, certain advisors that have a good record, a good placement record. The number one question you should always ask yourself when you're considering a school is where do their graduates go? And if they go to places you would want to work at, then that's the school you should apply to. That's very, very important. And I don't think it's asked enough um, by, uh, by potential candidates. You really need to look at the placement record of these programs. Uh, it will not be over in four years. So don't, don't plan on a four-year window. They're gonna show you a flight plan that says you can finish in four years, but that, that's not what's gonna happen. Uh, the median finish time is 5.6 years. That, that's the median. And so really try to look at a five to six year window. Uh, lastly, and this is why I said you have to have this fire in the belly to get through, you need to take care of your mental health if you're going to be doing the PhD. Uh, 
we know from many surveys, uh, ones that are even econ specific, that about 18 students experience some form of moderate anxiety uh, to severe anxiety in the PhD. Right? You're going to be questioning why are you still there? You're going to be questioning whether you should stay in the program. Uh, you need to take care of your mental health because if you do that, you'll be able to keep that fire that's going inside of you longer. You don't want someone to come in and, and you know, put the flames out. So you really need to take care of, of your mental health if you're going to go through this PhD program. All right. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is what does the PhD look like if you're going to go through it? Your first year, you're going to be taking a, uh, a math camp course of some sort. So it's math for, for economics. You're going to take a micro course. You're going to take a macro course. And you're going to take a econometrics course. Your next semester, you're going to take those same things, but just part two. <laughs> and then at the end of that uh, semester, you're going to take what are known as uh, comprehensive exams, comp exams, prelim exams. Uh, generally, there is one in microeconomics, one in macroeconomics, and one in econometrics. Um, every uh, school has their own policy about which ones you can fail and retake versus which ones you can't. At UVA at the time when I took them, uh, micro was one exam and macro and econometrics were a joint exam together. Um, if you passed both, then you went ahead and continued in the program. If you failed one of them, you had an opportunity to pass the other one, but if you fail twice, you're, you're done with the program. And if you fail both, you're, you're done. You, you walk out with a master's pass. So that's the setup. That's the big filter when we're talking about exams in this. The next year you take your field specializations and those are all uh, dependent really on, on the school you're at, but that can be IO, health, labor, public, so on and so forth. Uh, you do take field exams at the end of that year, but generally speaking, most people do really well on those because those are the ones that they wanted to take anyway. And after that comes the, the nomadic year. This is the year where you have to go out and find your dissertation proposal, <laughs> right? So it, it's as if your uh, professors say, okay, you have learned enough now, my child, go off and wander into the wilderness <laughs> and come back with a, with a tablature of your question. If you successfully do that, um, then you'll have your proposal. Your proposal defense is really the hardest part in this PhD. Uh, is finding that question that will get you over the hump and that people believe will be a good question. Once you've made it past your proposal, and that proposal is the next great filter, um, you will work on your PhD. The time it takes you to finish the PhD is going to be dependent on you and what success you can have along the way. But by the time you get to your dissertation defense, um, if you, everyone in your committee has basically said you're ready to defend, it probably is just going to be you and your committee in that room as you go through it. And hopefully if everything works out, you walk out as a doctor. Uh, but that's the, the sequence when it comes to the, to the PhD. Uh, I'm going to leave the remaining time open for questions, uh, but uh, I hope you learned something along the way. I know it was a lot of information in a very short period of time. Thank you.